What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying your life to the fullest today. Today we are reviewing the 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 SLT. Huge thank you to Dwayne Ferguson over at Coons Tyson Chevy Buick GMC for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular SLT or any GM product with the exception of Cadillac, I'll be sure to have Dwayne's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. First, let's talk about the exterior and performance. And like I said, this is a 2023 GMC Sierra SLT. And this particular one has been painted in the $495 titanium rush metallic paint. It's basically like a dark gray metallic paint and it looks absolutely fantastic here in person. Now, with the SLT, you do get LED headlights with the telebeam as well as LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals, and LED fog lights towards the bottom of your front bumper. Also with the SLT, you do get a chrome grill header, which is located up top here. And then just below that, you get chrome grill insert bars with black accents. That's a closer look at your front grill. You get your GMC logo, and then you also get air ducts on each side of the front end that are functional, which hopefully aid to better fuel economy. At least that is the goal of GMC's engineering. And then also with the SLT, you do get a chrome front bumper and some dark gray trim at the center of the front bumper right here that surrounds your two black vertical tow hooks. You got one right there one over there so if you do end up getting your truck stuck just know you do have those two tow hooks there at the front and then also if you guys were wondering about the ground clearance you get 8.1 inches of ground clearance with the slt now this one also has the optional 1725 dollar x31 off-road and protection package which gives you skid plates now those skid plates protect your front underbody your oil pan your differential and your transfer case so if you do do any off-roading just know that your important mechanical pieces are covered so up above your wheel and tire setup you do get satin black wheel arch moldings and then again this one also has the optional three thousand four hundred and seventy dollars slt premium package which gives you these 20 inch polished aluminum wheels with gray pockets now this one also has the optional x31 off-road package which i mentioned to you guys and that x31 off-road package gives you these 275 60 bridgestone dueler at tires that's a view of the tread pattern on those tires so if you guys don't get the x31 off-road package you get a more road oriented tire now if you guys do not like this wheel and tire setup there are about 11 different wheel options um, ranging from 18 inch to 22 inch wheels so you guys are covered if you guys do not like these particular wheels you get your 5.3 liter v8 fender badge and then just to the right of that you do get chrome mirror caps with the SLT. Now these mirrors are heated, power folding, and the driver's side mirror is auto dimming, which is very nice. Then you also get a fisheye mirror. I'm not sure if the GoPro is gonna pick it up, but you get the good old fashioned fisheye mirror because this particular one does not have blind spot monitoring. And then these side view mirrors also include memory. So you do get memory seat adjustment settings here on the interior. So not only is it gonna memorize your seat setting, but it is also going to memorize your side view mirror settings, which is very, very nice. Then you also get puddle lights on the bottom of the mirror. And this is to go along with your perimeter lighting button. So if you come here on the interior, you guys can turn um, those lights on the exterior side view mirrors on or off, I believe by the push of this button right here so that's very very nice and that's just a nice feature i might be wrong but i'm pretty sure it is that button and then up top here you have your body color shark fin antenna with the slt you do get rain sensing wipers also with the slt you get chrome window trim chrome door handles with keyless access chrome sierra badging and then with the three thousand four hundred and seventy dollar slt premium package you get these chrome assist steps so you guys can obviously take those off if you guys do not like it uh, but that does come with the slt premium package now opening this up you do get a capless filler neck which is obviously nice and then moving up to here let's take a look because you can see you do not get a power sliding rear window however you do get a rear window defogger if you guys do want the power sliding rear window a package that you guys can get and this is the more expensive option um, to get the 
power sliding rear windows. So there are two options. I'm going to go over the first one. This is the more expensive one. And that is the SLT Premium Plus package, which is a $5,550 option. And just some highlighted features that I thought I would include. Um, not only do you get the power sliding rear window, but you also get adaptive cruise control and a 360 degree view camera system. Now, if you guys do still want the power sliding rear window and you want a cheaper option, you can get the $1,050 SLT preferred package, uh, which again is just a cheaper option to get the power sliding rear window. I thought I would uh, mention both of those two things. And then obviously with the X31 off-road and protection package, you get the X31 badging. Now working our way to the back end of the SLT, you do get LED taillights as well as the multi-pro tailgate the LED taillights and multi-pro tailgate comes standard with the SLT as does this backup camera here and your puddle light you guys can see all of your badging on the tailgate I will show you guys the multi-pro tailgate here in a second but I'm gonna go over the rest of the rear end while we are at it you do get a corner step chrome rear bumper and then those dual exhaust tips also come a part of the $1,725 x31 off-road and protection package which gives you again that dual exhaust and spray Spray in bed liner. So let's go over the tailgate. So again, this is the multi pro tailgate. So if I press this, this will hopefully, I think, just bring uh, or open up this top piece right here. Now you can open up both pieces. So I'm going to press this one and this one, and they're both going to open up. And that is what your tailgate looks like. Again, you do get spray in bed liner. If you guys want an easier way to get into the bed, again, you press both of those two buttons. Then you can press on this button, and this basically turns into a step. You can also get a optional kicker sound system and this is where the speakers would be so if you guys do tailgating at football games that might be an option you might want to get but again this makes it much easier to step in and out of the truck bed which is very nice and then you also get a nice little handle over here if you want to um, step you know grab onto when you step in and out of the vehicle and then pull up on this and that will go back down you do get LED cargo lighting as standard with the SLT and that is what your bed looks like. I think you get 12 different tie down hooks um, throughout the entire interior or uh, truck bed. So you get three, 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 and three. And that is a look at the truck bed on the SLT. Now I'm gonna close this. All right, now with the tailgate closed, there are a couple more things I wanted to go over with you guys while we are at the back end of the SLT. Again, this does have the X31 off-road and protection package. And like I mentioned to you guys, you get dual exhaust, spray in bed liner, but I didn't mention that you also get a two-speed transfer case with the X31. So if you guys just get an SLT, it is a single speed transfer case. So you do not get four wheel drive low. Thought I would mention that to you guys. And then also you get a 323 rear axle and it is an auto locking rear differential, which personally I'm not the biggest fan of, uh, but again, you know, whatever to each their own. If you guys were wondering about the max tow capacity, you get a 9,200 pound max tow capacity on this particular vehicle. And the max payload capacity is 1,667 pounds on this particular example that we have here today. But I'm curious to hear what you guys think of the 2023 GMC Sierra SLT in the comment section down below. So let me know, what do you guys think of it? Do you guys like it? Do you guys not like it? Also, one more thing I wanted to know, because personally, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think, uh, and that is of the auto locking rear differential. Do you guys like to be able to lock your own differential, or do you guys like it to do it by itself? Let me know in the comments down below, but let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals that 5.3 liter V8 that makes 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission for a 0 to 60 time in 6.5 seconds. If you guys were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 16 miles per gallon in the city, 20 miles per gallon on the highway for 17 miles per gallon combined with four-wheel drive. Now, if you guys do want a couple different um, engine options, the SLT might be the trim level to get because with the SLT, you guys can get the 5.3 liter V8, you guys can get the 6.2 liter V8, as well as the three liter Duramax. 5.3 is a great engine. If you guys want better fuel economy, you're gonna get the three liter Duramax. And then if you guys just want more power out of your gas engine, you're gonna to wanna to look at the 6.2 liter V8. But if you guys are enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm really trying to hit 10,000 subscribers and I cannot do that without your guys' help. So please, if you guys would take a second out of your day, give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. But 
let's move into the interior. Moving into the interior, I wanted to show you guys what the key fob looks like with the SLT. So obviously you get your unlock and your lock functions, but you can also remote start the vehicle by pressing that button twice. And you can also drop the tailgate by pressing that button twice. So again, like I mentioned earlier on in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, press on this button right here and the vehicle will unlock. You can also lock the vehicle by pressing on that button, but let's remote starter. So press this button and then press this button twice listen and the 5.3 liter v8 roars to life so let's take a look at our driver's side door panel so taking a look at the door panel you guys can see you get some vinyl wrapping at the top of the door panel you get some wood grain trim aluminum trim aluminum door handle you get your unlock and your lock functions two memory seat adjustment settings you can see right there then you get a nicely padded and leather wrapped armrest with some stitching you get automatic up and down windows in the front but you only get automatic down windows in the back here are your power adjustable side view mirror controls like i mentioned earlier on in the video as well you can power fold in your side view mirrors and this would be the button you would press now the side view mirrors are folding in if you press that button again they fold right back out this will restrict your passenger window privileges and then you get a great amount of miscellaneous storage space at the bottom of the door panel now earlier on in the video i did mention to you guys that this one has 3470 dollars slt premium package and you guys get this bose sound system with that package you get your aluminum door sill 10-way power driver seat 10-way power front passenger seat as standard with the slt heated and ventilated front seats which is also very very nice now let's step into the interior and one thing I wanted to mention is that those ventilated front seats also come a part of the SLT premium package. So if you guys want ventilated front seats, you might want to get the SLT premium package. But let's turn her actually on. So push your foot down on the brake, key fob in the interior, push to start, and then the rest of the interior pops up. The reason it didn't pop up uh, initially is because I remote started the vehicle. So you get four HVAC vents on the front dash, one, two, three, and four. This is your electronic parking brake button. You can go in between four high, four low, two high, and four automatic. Here are your different driving modes. So dependent on if you twist it to the left or to the right, you can go access your different drive modes. So you got normal, you got sport, and you have off-road. And then if you guys press on this button, that will put you into your tow haul mode, and it lets you know what mode you're in right there. I'm gonna turn that back off. Again, this is your perimeter lighting button, so watch what happens when I press that button. They were already on when I pressed them uh, when I was showing you guys earlier on in the video, but I'm gonna turn them on again. You guys can see that the, actually they're not on right now because they were already on. Now I'm gonna press that button again. Now this should turn the perimeter lighting on. So now these lights are on and you have a, uh, another light on the other side view mirror as well. So pressing on this button right here, turns both of those lights on. This will turn your LED box lighting on. This will dim or brighten your digital gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. And then below that you have your headlight control. So you got headlights automatic, daytime running lights on and headlights always on. And then pressing on that button will turn your fog lights on or off. Also with the SLT premium package, you get this power tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So if you guys don't wanna do that manually, you might wanna get the SLT premium package. Now let's take a look at our steering wheel. So this steering wheel is leather wrapped as well as heated. That is standard with the SLT. Over here, you have your turn signal stock. So let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what your turn signal sounds like on the SLT. Now, this is also your windshield wiper control stock as well as um, the button to turn your IntelliBeam on or off. So you have a button on the end of your turn signal stock that will turn your automatic high beams on or off. And then obviously you have your different windshield wiper controls. So this particular SLT does have the front bucket seats as well as the center console. So you can see, get your center console as well as the front bucket seats. So with the center console front bucket seats, you also get the precision shift, which gives you the paddle shifters mounted behind the steering wheel as well as this shifter at the center or on the center console. So yeah, this one has been optioned with that. On this side of the steering wheel, you have your different cruise control settings. This does not have adaptive cruise control. And then on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, you have your different media controls. And then the this scroll knob here, as well as these two buttons are to control your gauge cluster, as well as this button right here is to pick up on a phone call and or speak to the vehicle. And this is to hang up on a phone call. But first let's take a listen to our horn. 
that is what the horn sounds like on the 2023 Sierra. So with the SLT as standard, you do get a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, as well as a 13.4 inch infotainment screen with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto connectivity. So let's go throughout this screen first. So you guys can see right now, I have my speedometer on the left-hand side of the screen, and I have my RPM gauge on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, what's projecting on the inside of my RPM gauge is my drive modes, as well as letting me know what, uh, if I'm in two wheel drive, four wheel drive, or you know those different things. Uh, you can change that, as well as you can change the compass that's at the center of your speedometer. Now I'm gonna move the vehicle here for a second because I'm in the direct sunlight and it's gonna get hot. All right, now that we're out of the direct sunlight, you guys will be able to see what I'm talking about better. So right now, digital speedometer readout is up top there. Get your fuel range stuff. I got my fuel gauge down here. I got my coolant temperature gauge over here. You you guys can also adjust what's on this bottom screen and then I got my drive summary at the center of the gauge cluster I can adjust what's on here just by scrolling down so right now I am trip one trip two, timer tire pressure stuff driver assistance stuff oil life brake pad life air filter life blank page and info page options you can also have your digital speedometer readout uh, project down here now like I mentioned you guys can pretty much adjust this screen exactly as you like it to so we can click over to here you can go into your settings and you can go into your display layout so right now this is classic you can go into progressive which is what is displaying now and you can go into digital which is basically like a again well exactly what it says a futuristic looking gauge cluster go down one more you can go into clean which basically just gives you your speedometer readout so personally i like classic but like i mentioned to you guys you guys can adjust exactly what is on your screen so you can go to left side info which will adjust that you can go into right side info which will adjust that you can go into your lower gauges and you can adjust what is displayed down here so you can go into medium you can go into minimum you can go into maximum which gives you all your different battery voltage stuff oil pressure stuff so right now it's on medium and that's what I'm going to leave it on so pretty cool uh, all the adjustability that you can go throughout this screen you can also see your phone stuff on the screen you can see your compass on the screen you can see your different media stuff on the screen which is like your AM FM XM Bluetooth audio Google News podcast USB stuff like that and then all the way over back to our info screen which brings you into these screens this is the screen personally that I would leave it on and then behind your infotainment screen you have a great spot that you can set your phone as well as like a tape measure or pens pencils stuff like that and then just below that again you guys do get a 13.4 inch infotainment screen with wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto connectivity which we will go throughout that screen now i'm going to just stay in demo mode um, for um, you know video reasons get your audio stuff map stuff phone stuff camera stuff google assistant play store android auto apple carplay swipe over to here you got your trailer light stuff you can put your climate control um, on the screen you can go to your different settings this is a wi-fi capable vehicle my GMC, you can set service appointments and then you get your podcast and Google no, uh, Google News. And then these are basically like shortcut buttons so I can shortcut directly into my phone if I wanted to, which right now my phone is not connected. And then down here you have your home button. You also get another redundant home button below that that is an actual physical button. So if I go into audio stuff, I can click on here and that will bring me directly into the home screen. And then just to the right of the redundant home button, get your volume knob and then you have all these different buttons throughout here this is your lane keep assist button this is to turn auto stop start on or off this is to drop your tailgate this is to turn your hazards on this is to turn traction control on or off like i mentioned this one has the x31 off-road and protection package which gives you hill descent control and this is your hill descent control button and then below that you have your climate control stack so again this does have heated and ventilated seats so you can either have your heated seat be on your butt and your back or you can have it just be on your back and then you also have your ventilated seat button this is a dual zone climate control control vehicle and what I like about this vehicle unlike Ford's is that it actually displays the temperature of which that you have the climate system on so 62 and 67 I'm going to turn that back off this is your push button start button and then over here you have two different USB ports so you get a USB A port and a USB C port one thing I meant didn't uh, mention on the infotainment screen is that it displays your current time as well as the ambient exterior temperature and then you can go into your Google map stuff which I'm not going to do at the moment but you can go in between your map stuff your clock stuff and your audio stuff on this screen over here which is pretty cool um, get a great spot you can set 
whatever you want to really down here like a phone or you know miscellaneous items two cup holders another spot you can set a phone this is your gear shifter like i mentioned so this does have the front buckets and the center console which gives you this gear shifter as well as your paddle shifters behind the steering wheel one thing that i missed on the steering wheel is that these are your tuning buttons and that is behind this side of the steering wheel and then you have your volume buttons which are located on this side uh, behind like this stuff so you can volume up by the push of this button then you can volume down by that button so just thought i would point that out um, and then let's take a look at our center console you can see it's a nicely padded and leather wrapped armrest opening this up you get a great amount of storage space down in here you guys can take this divider out if you want to you can put that divider back in if you want to you get a household power outlet down in here as well as another usb a port and another usb c port and one thing that's very very nice is that you also get a wireless charging pad right here as well i believe the wireless charging pad comes a part of the slt premium package um, which is very very nice i personally like a wireless charging pad then moving over to here you get an upper glove box by the push of this button you can fit like six sausage mcmuffins in there and then you get a lower glove box that is locking for your owner's manual and other miscellaneous items very good amount of storage space in both of those glove boxes you get an auto dimming rear view mirror you get your on star stuff up top here you get your driver light your passenger light they're both led and then you can turn them all on by pressing on this button and then all the interior lights turn on press that again they all turn back off this is your bluetooth mic pickup for a bluetooth phone the driver or the passenger excuse me gets one as well opening your visor up um, this is a great spot you can set money or any small paper product and then opening this up you get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights and the same goes for your passenger passenger gets an opu panel the driver gets an opu panel and obviously the rear passengers also get opu panels one right there and one over there i wanted to go over some of the options that this particular one has so again this one uh has the optional three thousand four hundred and seventy dollar slt premium package which gives you the front bucket seats the center console with usb ports the bose sound system the power adjustable steering wheel as well as the chrome assist steps and the 20 inch wheels now a couple things that come standard with the slt include heated front seats 10-way power front seats the driver's seat with memory and the heated steering wheel now this one also has the optional 1725 dollar x31 off-road and protection package which includes an off-road suspension hill descent control skid plates heavy duty air filter two speed transfer case all-terrain tires dual exhaust bed liner and all weather floor mats now if you guys want like the loaded experience or the loaded slt experience you guys might want to consider optioning the slt premium plus package which includes and i'll put it on screen the power rear window the bed liner the front bucket seats with console safety alert seat which is basically like a vibrating driver's seat as well as integrated trailer brake controller you get heated rear seats adaptive cruise control and a 360 degree view camera system i'll list the price of that on screen now now i do want to go over the msrp of the way that this particular one is spec so let me pull up the window sticker all right now let's talk about some safety and security stuff so this does have gmc pro safety which includes automatic emergency braking forward collision alert front pedestrian braking lane keep assist with lane departure warning you get a following distance indicator this does have intellibeam which is your automatic high beams you get the backup camera you get teen driver mode as well as a tire pressure monitoring system with tire fill alert now I do want to go over some government safety ratings which I'll throw on screen now. You guys can see overall vehicle score five stars frontal crash for the driver five stars frontal crash for the front passenger four stars side crash for both the front and rear seats is five stars and then the rollover is four stars so if god forbid you get in an accident at least you are in a very very safe vehicle now i'm going to throw the rest of the window sticker on screen you guys can go over the particular options that this one has the credit for the non-equipped with the column lock which you get a 50 dollars credit um, and you guys can see the discounts for the different packages and stuff like that but i want to highlight the msrp so the msrp of the way that this particular 2023 gmc sierra 1500 slt is spec'd is 65,535 dollars now let me know what you guys think of that price in the comment section down below but i do want to move into those rear seats before we move into the driving portion of the review so let's see what these rear seats look like you guys can see the passenger or the rear passenger door panel looks pretty much the exact same as the front driver um, but minus all like the controls obviously like i mentioned you get automatic down windows in the back but you do not get automatic up windows in the back you still get a nicely padded armrest 
with some stitching and then some miscellaneous storage space at the bottom of the door panel. Now, Opu panel, you guys can see you have these seats back here with these um, little cubbies for storage if you guys wanna you know, put something back under there. And then opening this seat up, these seats fold up just like that for uh, a good amount of flat storage space as well as you get this little divider here. You guys can set your jumper cables or miscellaneous items like that um, on this side of that. Now I'm gonna fold these seats back down and let's see what the rest of the interior here in the back looks like. So I am adjusted behind myself. You guys can see I've got tons of leg room, tons of knee room. You get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. You get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. You also get two cup holders, two HVAC vents. You get two USB ports. So you get a USB A port and a USB C port. You also get a center fold down armrest with two cup holders. And this is also nicely padded. Um, very nice back here. You got a spot up here you can set your dry cleaning. You get another one on this side as well. And then you have your two dome lights here at the center of the second row seats. So this vehicle is very, very nice. But you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the SLT. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, guys, and now on to the driving portion of the review. And the first thing I wanted to mention is that the sound system in this thing is really, really good. And I wanna compare this to the F-150's Bang & Olufsen 18 speaker unleashed sound system. Now that sound system is very, very good. However, for some reason, I always just feel like the Bose sound system is just a little bit better. And the other thing is that I can feel like the Bose sound system can take more abuse than the Bang & Olufsen sound system can, like when you turn it up. It just feels like the Bose is just a little bit better quality. I don't know, like the sound quality is, you know, they're relatively equal. I think the Bose is just a little bit better. It might edge out the Bang & Olufsen a little bit more, uh, but I feel like I can blast the Bose sound system for longer over a longer period of time without any of the speakers blowing as compared to the Bang & Olufsen sound system. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think. If you guys have any experience with the Bang & Olufsen sound system and the Bose sound system in new GM truck products, let me know what you guys think of the BNO versus the Bose. I think the Bose just edges it out just a tad bit more with seven less speakers. So again, that's just my personal opinion, but I think the Bose sound system is just a little bit better and it's it sounds phenomenal now a knock kind of to the sierra slash silverado platform is that the f-150 seats are definitely more comfortable than the sierra and the silverado seats now i'm not saying that these seats are uncomfortable by any means but you can definitely tell that the ford seats that is a very nice looking lotus um, that the ford seats are just a little bit more or actually they're a decent amount more comfortable than what we have here i'm gonna roll the window down that thing sounded really good and I'm pretty sure those things have like the same engine that you find in like a Toyota Camry. Not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, but anyway, the way that this thing drives, it drives very, very well. Now I have spoken very, very highly of the um, suspensions that GM puts in the Yukons and the Silverados and the Sierras and so on and so forth. Um, the suspensions, doesn't matter if it's a magnetic ride, the premium smooth ride suspension or the off-road tuned suspension like we have here today with the X31 off-road package, um, they all ride very, very well. Now, I'm gonna go back to this, comparing this to the F-150. I feel like the F-150's suspension rides a little bit, you know, softer when it comes to like a highway. I think it rides maybe a little bit more like more comfortable, but when it comes to handling wise, like if you're like doing like this kind of stuff, uh, I feel like the F-150 doesn't handle quite as well as the Silverados and the Sierras. Um, I think that these just handle a little bit better when you're going on like a back road and stuff like that. Um, you can see there is a little bit of body roll there, but uh, yeah, I think this one has definitely less body roll than you find in like the F-150s and stuff like that. So this thing still rides phenomenally well. Um, it's just, it rides a little bit firmer than like the F-150. But you know, still rides great. You know, this, if you guys are gonna be daily driving one of these, you guys are just gonna be cruising in traffic like I am here today. And uh, I mean, it cruises in traffic totally fine. Now, one thing and one button that I would recommend each and every one of you guys who buy one of these trucks to press every single time you guys get in this vehicle would be this auto stop start off button right here. I cannot stand 
auto stop start and, and it's not just in this it's in the f-150s it's in the ram 1500s it's in literally any vehicle i can't stand the auto stop start system personally um so that is not a knock particularly on the sierra that's a knock on pretty much any new vehicle um that's out today they all have that stupid system personally not a fan of it but anyway that's besides the point um thing rides great now comparing this to like the eco boost i would say that this thing with the 5.3 is about you know right on par um with like the eco boost 2.7 liter v6 now i would say overall powertrain wise you're gonna get more power out of the f-150 with all their different powertrains you got the three and a half liter eco boost slash power boost which is like their three and a half liter eco boost hybrid you get the three and a half liter eco boost twin turbo v6 you get the 2.7 liter eco boost v6 and the five liter v8 personally if it was me i'd get the five liter v8 five liter sounds fantastic however if you guys are going for sound um <laughs> i mean obviously the five three definitely sounds better than the two seven eco boost and uh, i would say they are about right on par with each other um you know power wise or at least the seat of the butt dyno power wise uh, i feel like they have about relatively similar um, accelerations now you guys might hear a little rattle coming from the back that is just the dealer plate um, bouncing up against the rear window so that is not anything to do with the interior fit and finish on the sierra slts uh, but when we're going to come up to uh, a little right turn up here and we're going to do a on-ramp acceleration but i'm just going to do an acceleration out of traffic here real quick to show you guys that this thing has plenty of get up and go you know i don't feel like this thing is lacking power at all um, and without that license plate in the back this thing cruises very quietly here on the interior now i almost feel like the sierra i don't know because i i do like the fords i do like the rams and i do like the gmcs um but i ah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel because I was going to say um, before I stopped myself that the GMC Sierra is the best looking 1500 truck, but I really do like the way the F-150s look and I do like the way that the Ram 1500 Limiteds look with their uh, limited specific headlights. Now, I am going to do a highway on-ramp acceleration. I'm not going to floor it, but I'm definitely going to you know give it 70% throttle. Full disclosure, that on-ramp right there is a downhill, um, so it definitely is faster than it would be, you know, if this was like a, um, you know, flat ground. But man, still more than enough get up and go in my personal opinion. It looks like we got a Challenger coming up on us. It looks like a Challenger wide body. It looks pretty sweet. Uh, but anyway, the acceleration is very, very good. And yeah, I mean, listen to it. Cruises great at you know 68 miles per hour we got an m3 out we got a challenger scat pack wide body out it's a nice day to be driving one of those vehicles but man this thing is going to eat up highway miles if you guys do a lot of highway driving it's also going to eat up your city miles as well um you know fuel economy not the greatest but again you do have that nice v8 that can tow over nine thousand pounds so this thing is very capable towing wise um, also very capable when it comes to payload capacity i believe it was 1667 pound uh payload capacity which is fantastic you can pretty much put whatever you need to in the bed and you don't really have to worry about um weight because you know 1600 pounds that is a lot of weight i am going to do one more little mild acceleration here going up this hill nothing crazy but something um that i would do you know i'm giving it more gas than i normally would on an acceleration like this so let's see how she does good acceleration there as well and uh this bridge coming up here sucks tons of potholes and it soaks up those bumps very very well now i did a video the other day um compare or i did a video with an f-150 tremor if you guys want to check that out i'll link that in the upper right hand side of this video but i feel like the f-150 tremor or off-road packages that f uh, ford offers like with the fx4 i feel like again they ride just a little bit smoother over stuff whereas compared to this it rides a little bit more firm um, but still the ride in this is very very good i don't feel like it's too firm i feel like it has the right mix of handling for firm suspensionness, if that makes sense to you guys but uh 
That's it for today's video. Just to summarize this vehicle, very, very nice. Chevy slash GM really stepped their game up in 2022, I believe it was, with the interior redesign. It was much needed, and uh, it's definitely a huge step up, and it definitely puts them into competition with Ford and Ram. So very, very good interior. Love the way the exterior looks look. And uh, again, that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm really trying to hit 10,000 subscribers, and I cannot do that without your guys's help so if you guys would please help me hit 10,000 subscribers we're literally only like 2200 away please give the video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button but i'll catch you guys in the next video peace